Gemini, this is your week ahead astrology forecast from Astro Astrology Motivation by Born Without Boundaries. My name is Michelle, everybody welcome to the channel. In this video what we do is go over the major planetary aspects and transits and how they impact your natal sun and what that means day to day for this week. This is the week of May 11th through the 17th. I'm looking down on my notes just in case. You can see that there's not a lot, a lot going on this week for you. It's more of a transitional week, but we'll see if we can get to the details of what it means you're being set up for. Just an FYI, um, I'm going to start out really broad uh, with the, the big things that are impacting everybody that everybody should be aware of, and then whittle that down into you know, what you should be aware of specifically, um, Gemini's. And then we'll go into the decans as I'll, I'll tell you how planets are interacting with your natal suns and what that means for you based on which decan they're in. A decan is a group of uh, 10 degrees and every zodiac sign has three of them because every zodiac sign is a total of 30 degrees. So if your natal sun sits between zero and nine degrees Gemini, you are a Gemini one. If it sits between 10 and 19 degrees, you are a Gemini 2. And if it sits between 20 and 29 degrees, you are a Gemini 3. You don't have to know what degree your natal sun sits at for this video because what I'll do is I will... I will, I will tell you the correlating birth dates or at least the range of birthdays. Now, those are estimates and the most exact way is to know where your natal sun is located. And if you wanna do that, it's really easy and free. Um, there are a lot of websites that do it. Just search free natal chart. You'll need your birth date, which you already have, time and place, and it'll take a few seconds for them to spit that information out to you. So if you really love astrology, that's like the best place to start anyway. So. Let's start really broad with the things that are going to be impacting everyone. Mercury goes direct, and that hits home because Mercury is your ruling dignitary. But on the 15th, Mercury goes direct. Will you feel it going direct? Not this week, no, no. Into next week, it's still gonna sort of, sort of try to speed itself up a little bit. So maybe by the 20th, the 22nd, you'll start to actually feel things working out again. But at least we know Mercury sta Mercury post stationary, it looks like it stands still. It didn't really stand still. It's just gonna start to look like it's going back in the right direction again. And then we have a uh, sextile to Saturn. Mercury is sextile, oh, we'll get into Mercury, I'm sorry. And then we have Jupiter on the last day of this week, on the 17th, Jupiter transits into Taurus, which is abundance galore. But this is even bigger, I think. Jupiter is square to Pluto, which it was last week too. It's square to Mars and Pluto and Mars are in opposition to each other and Jupiter is uh, conjunct the North Node, so it's opposite the South Node. So we have a grand cross in the sky. This is, now it's not as firm as it will be next week, I think next week is like an uber implosion. And Jupiter and Pluto are gonna be square to the 15th of June. Um, Mars will be in opposition to Pluto for the next couple of weeks or next week and a half. So there is just this sense of something's about to implode. I'm not really sure what it is, but um, it's angry and it's not gonna take it anymore. It's like the Roto-Rooter of the astrology, but now that it in involves Mars and the North Node and South Node, there is a sense of, fine, we're just gonna wreck the whole pipe system then. If you're not gonna change, will break it. It's that kind of energy. It's that relentless, ruthless kind of energy that's taking a turn, taking a turn for the worse um, over the next couple of weeks. So be aware of that. And then we have this week, the grand trine, grand water trine between Saturn, Venus, and the South Node, which means people are in their comfort zone. Some people are not even going to see this coming. There's a sense of hey, maybe this is the impetus, right? I don't want to lose my comfort zone, so I'm going to break everything. But then that would super expose people as well. So there is a sense of something not going to go right or what people expected. And I'm just letting you guys know. Um, hmm. And it is people, it does involve powerhouses. It does involve people who feel all feel like they should be the ones in control. So something to watch 
something to watch. Let's de like let's focus down now into specific Gemini specific. What's Mercury doing? Mercury is your ruling dignitary, so it's important to keep an eye on how it's interacting, who it's interacting with, or what energy it's interacting with, and um, you know where it's at because it will impact you. A sort of it'll sort of sort of be the backstroke for like the 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 backdrop for everything that you are. You'll be picking up these vibrations. So. Mercury post direct on the 15th all week long it is sextile to Saturn and conjunct the north node um, actually it's conjunct the north node more toward the end of the week because um, by the 15th it'll be at five degrees I think Taurus right now in the beginning of the week it's at six degrees so it'll really be conjunct the north node by the end of the week when it posts stationary when it stops going retrograde um, and that will also put it in a square to Pluto. So for a while, Mercury really does fall into this mix of there's information that's coming out. I think somebody tried to hide something, but that's what the retrograde and Pluto are for. And it, it something's about to get turned back on or um, talked about. Information's going to be out there. Like things are going to start working again. And that's going to be part of what sets everything off. So Mercury um, is sextile to Saturn, conjunct the North Node, and square to Pluto. So there's something hidden there. There's some hidden information this week that is going to cause people a lot of trouble. Anyway, um, how does it impact you? Well, Mercury square to Pluto for you is just a sense of stuff that you've held repressed really starting to cause you pain and agita and be challenged because oh I didn't want to say it I didn't want to talk about it I didn't want to go for it maybe I didn't want to put the application in or something like that is just being held back like whatever was held back or repressed is going to start to create challenges for you guys the sextile to Saturn means that there's so much ability for you to move forward with your career so this whole Pluto stuff is going to really agitate you it's going to kind of make you need to confront maybe hidden information or withheld information um and then we have north node so your future focus mercury is future focused wants to move on wants to move forward ideas future ideas you know brilliant ideas ideas of like like being like ideas of the future we'll just say that um, so let's get into the decans to see exactly how this is going to impact your natal suns. Gemini 1s, 0 to 9 degrees Gemini. Basically, you are the Geminis who are born in May. You're the May Geminis. So May 22nd through May 30th in and around there, that's your May Geminis. Definitely if you are a Taurus cusp, that is you. So your natal suns are square to Saturn, which means laws rules regulation authority figures all that kind it's it's creating a challenge for you somehow maybe yeah it's just creating a challenge for you um and then we have a trine to pluto which is a long-term um aspect as well trying to pluto means you guys especially are looking for change are looking for this downfall and the sextile to mars means you have the vitality to make it happen you have the energy to to push things. You have the courage and you have the vitality. And there's just this sense of, I don't want to be stuck. I want things to move forward. And anybody who has that energy about them seems to be batting up against Saturn. Of course, because when, when people have things established, they don't want them to change or they don't understand the new stuff. So that could cause dissonance for the next year or so. Um, it could cause career dissonance for the next year or so. But Pluto being trying to your natal suns means this is all part of your butterfly period. It's like where you earn your earn your wings or earn your way out of your cocoon. And that's what's inevitable. And you're going to be happy on the other side. Um, so Gemini 2s, what's I'm sorry, Gemini 1s, what's happening this week is a sextile to Mars and Mercury going direct. So there's a sense of your natal suns are sextile to Mars, meaning you will have more energy, vitality, and maybe in some ways more, more um, mojo when it comes to your sexuality. You'll definitely be in your body, be more physical. It's a great time to get more physical or plan on being more physical this week. Um, Gemini 2s, it's kind of a light week for you. 
Um, you are still sextile to uh, Chiron, which means you are working through and learning from your suffering. You are finding opportunities by the way that you have been challenged and the lessons that you have learned by shit you've been through. So it's you right now turning the shit you've been through into opportunities for yourself and opening doors for others. So you are on a pressure spot, but this has been going on for a couple of years for you guys and will for just a couple more, like a year and a half more. So, um, yeah, yeah, just keep, listen, keep to the faith and keep believing in yourself because whatever is really, feels like it's harming you is actually going to motivate you to break whatever's trying to harm you. That's kind of the, the my mentality right now. Because long because Chiron has been a long term, uh, the sextile to Chiron has been a long term thing that you guys have been dealing with. You've kind of hit your stride with that. But anytime something is acting upon Chiron, it's going to exacerbate it or change the energy a little bit. And that's why I wrote down square to Mars. Chiron is square to Mars, which means there is some kind of but like 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 damage. So I would say damage or injury that's happening. Your your natal suns are still sextile tomorrow, but it's almost like seeing what somebody else is getting into or seeing that some, somebody else get hurt is starting to make is is going to sort of infuse you with more inspiration to help, to help or to feel more gratitude toward this turn of events or or the fact that you're you're coming out of the suffering so it's just a it's just a sense of maybe even just comparison right right now there could also mean some aches and pains that are coming up from the past or from the old injuries especially physical injuries but ultimately it's going to motivate you and teach you to learn new things and find new opportunities to heal yourself essentially. That's what I wanted to point out. Okay. So we have three Gemini. Now injuries don't have to be physical, right? It could be injury to your reputation or your career as well or your relationship. Yes. Apply it where you will. Um, it depends on which house this is in, which your natal chart will also tell you. So threes, Gemini threes, you are the last 10 days of Gemini season that in and around the last nine, nine, nine and a half. Um, so the dates would be, um, say May 22nd through May 30th, right? Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. I had it wrong. So it's going to be cancer cusps. So it's June, say June 22nd through June 30th. It'll be those last nine days of Gemini season. And definitely that you can't cancer cusps. Um, your natal suns are sextile to Jupiter, and they're trying to Saturn. So there are opportunities that are coming from this sort of traditional system of the things that are working out. Take, advan take advantage of it now. It's not, I don't think it's gonna last long, but get it while you can. Um, or, yeah, 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 or being so lucky that you're also favored by authority figures or you find a way to like harmonize or balance things out when it comes to legal issues or financial issues or issues with your career. Um, if only if you are a Cancer cusp, um, you are square to Neptune, which could mean more confusion, more sleepiness, more distractibility. Also, you have been dealing with that for a while, so I don't think that's too big. There's a quincunx to Pluto, though, which is long-term, and because Pluto is so active right now, there's a sense of this tension in the air is really starting to frustrate you because things were just starting to freaking work out for you. Gem, uh, new, uh, Jupiter is going to be sextile to your natal suns for the next week, week and a half, so just take every advantage and opportunity now since Jupiter is moving into Taurus, it will last longer term. So get those contracts written, get them signed so that even when things fall apart, there's still something maybe not you can lean on, but that you, you'll have to show for it. Just to let you know, because you got to look at what's going on around you too. And I, I feel that there's something coming, which may be frustrating for you because it's like, I just got here and now the ride is shut down. Ride that ride and, 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 Go for it when you have the opportunity this week, okay? I love you guys. Uh, please leave your comments below and let me know how this energy is impacting you. Before you click off, subscribe to the channel and help us grow over here. And then come on over to Born Without Boundaries Tarot 
for your week ahead tarot card reading. I love you guys, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye, Gemini.